Hey, it's Chris, Luigi Games. Let's talk the search for Planet X. Now, what do you need to know about this game? Do you like deduction games? Do you like games that play well in a group? Do you like games that require, pretty much, the use of an app? Do you like Sudoku? Logic? Reasoning? Low luck? Well, if some of those intrigue you, if all of those intrigue you, let's talk why I refer to this as the search for planet Sudoku. Let's talk. Now, with the search for planet X, this is a brain-burning deduction style game that eliminates the yelling, the accusations, the chaos, of typical deduction games that you might be more familiar with, a la a line of coup, resistance, even one of my personal favorites, Murder in Hong Kong, Secret Hitler, code names, that sort of thing. It takes it and it makes it into those math problems from grade school that you might be familiar with. If A is next to B, if C is next to X, if X is to the left of A, where are all these lined up? What is the order in which all these are lined up? Did you like those math problems as a kid? Did they frustrate you? Or did you enjoy pondering how those interacted and working them out? Because at its core, when you think of Search for Planet X, for better or for worse, that is what you're doing on this map. Let me show you some basic gameplay, and then let me give you my final thoughts. So here is your basic setup for the search for Planet X. The board has two different sides, and on this side you can see that there are 12 different sectors. Now, you'll also see that there are four symbols around the edges. Now that's going to represent the four different players that are in the game. Each one of you is going to have one of these secret little foldouts that's going to entail everything you need to know, every little resource that's going to be important, and it's going to hide your information from other people because you're going to have, essentially you have this fancy scratch pad that allows you to slowly deduct what is in what area, what isn't in other areas, and again, goes through the logic rules and is a good place that you can write all your clues down as well as the research. So what you see here is the basic setup for the beginning of the game. It's random in that sense. And you're going to be placing your markers around this outer edge. And this outer edge is what you're going to be traversing on. Because each of the actions that you're going to be taking has a certain time component to them. So the more specific your actions. So if you are asking the app something very specific in a small amount of sectors, it's going to cost you more time. If you are asking something more general or through many sectors that is less specific, it's going to cost you less time. And why does that matter? Because it's a little bit of a rondel system. So you'll see that the furthest one back sequentially is the one that goes. So in this case, purple would be the next one up. So purple could do something anywhere from essentially one to five time slots. And depending on how many it is, depends on what the next player is going to be. Now, in this specific case, purple can do nothing that makes them the next person, but yellow is essentially going to be that because even if they do a one-point research action, they actually get slotted in front of yellow if they are the second one to that area. Now, if we reset the board a little bit, and let's say we put purple over here now. Now on yellow's turn, they could decide that, okay, maybe it's worth getting two turns in a row, or maybe I need something very specific. So if they were to say, take the research action, research only takes one time piece. So then they would still have the ability to go again. However, they could also choose then or before to do something that would be three or four. So then obviously they'd be moving around over to this side and then it would be blue, so on and so forth. That is not very complicated. So the other interesting aspect of this game is, okay, well, that's great, Chris. You can, you can search any area, any time whatsoever. Well, no, you really can't because this little thing comes in and this follows you around. And what this is, is you can see the arrow right here. And this open side then 
is the visible sky. So, I mean, you can't see the full sky all the time, right? So it's simulating real life. So you can only see sectors five through 10 right now. So those are the only sectors you can also investigate. Those are all the sectors that you are currently in because this thing slides to wherever the person furthest back is. And so as the person further back moves around, this thing slides forward. And when it reaches these zones with these little icons, that's when you're taking other actions as a whole. These little tokens, as you can see here, are representative of the things you're deducing where they are in the sectors to begin with. So only when you reach one of these icons with the arrow, can you put down one of these because on the other side, they are generic. So people don't know what you're guessing into the outermost slot of an area. And then as it reaches the next one, Anything that is out here slides down one slot. When it gets to the middle slot, it is revealed. Then you use the app to tell you whether or not you are correct. Now you can have multiple stages of various guesses, theories out there at any one point. You can also have multiple people on the same track. You can even have multiple theories in the same spot. Now, this is the tricky part is because you almost just want to have something else out there before it gets to the center because the center bonus, if you are the first one to get there and you're correct, you get a certain amount of points depending on what the object is. Now, if you are on the track at all and you are right, you get the same amount of points. So we'll make this match here for a second for the examples illustration. If we are both right, well, in this case, we would both get four points. However, the person who reaches it first gets one extra bonus point. So if you are still even out here, you're still getting four of the five points, which means timing of this is very important. So when you see people putting stuff down, you need to know why, and you may need to get it out soon yourself as well. There are a few other smaller nuanced things, and I won't go into everything, but the one other thing that you need to know are these little tokens. These are your target tokens and you get two of them per game and you can say at any point in the game you can use one of these and say okay i'm going to choose this region and the app will tell you what is in or potentially nothing in that region period so when you're stuck when you need something quick that is a big action to be able to take but like i said you are limited to two per game period no matter what high risk high reward that is the game in a nutshell. Now, you can flip over the board. I won't do it here. But there is another side that has 18 sectors and more, a little bit more, of every single thing, object, in the game. And in order to remember that as well, the difference is because this little foldout only carries for the 12 sectors, if you will. They give you an additional little aid here that goes over the differences for the 18 sector board as well. So, after looking at that, where does that leave you? Now, pro in this game, or con, depending on which side you want to be on, as point number one, this is the most pure deduction game I have played. There is no chance. It is more the order in which you get the clues and how your brain is able to unscramble those clues in order to make the logical steps in deduction from one step to the next. That's really why I refer to it as the search for planet Sudoku. Now you're not putting the numbers together in terms of that type of puzzle with the boxes and the rows and the columns, but you are still doing it with the aligning of what is next to what, how am I interpreting that, how important is this, and everything that goes along with that. Now point number two is you need the app. And that is the blessing and the curse is that there are just many, many, many combinations because it is done on the app and iterations that you can just go through ad nauseum. That you don't have to worry about fiddling through a rule book or a stack of scenarios that are this thick. Trying to then, you know, use a little whatever to reveal but not reveal spoilers. And So, it is done in a very easy way. The app is very intuitive. But, a lot of people just are put off by the app. And also... Everybody at the table really benefits from having their own app on their own phone or iPad or whatever they're using. 
the pass and play in this game is less than ideal. So again, how big of a deal is that for you and your group? Something to be aware of as point number two. Point number three, the balance is actually relatively impressive. The fact at the beginning of the game that they offer sort of a makeup or a catch-up mechanic at the beginning, not throughout the game, in order to give or take away depending on skill level. And what I mean by that is they give you a certain number of clues. They allow you selecting a certain number of clues at the beginning in order to even things out. So if you have played this game multiple times, or if you are just better at this type of thing and you are playing against people who are at the opposite end of the spectrum, it allows you to choose, say, four clues and them to get eight or 12 clues in terms of adjacencies or that ilk. And so it does account for variable skill in that sense. But again, that still might not make it fun for people who do not enjoy this type of very brain burning deduction, because let's be clear, that's what it is. Now you feel very clever when you can figure things out that are a little bit more of a leap of intuition rather than the straightforward ones, just like Sudoku. But just like Sudoku, there is a point in which you can become very frustrated at your inability to figure that puzzle out. Or if one of your leaps in logic is wrong or incorrect, and it completely messes up the whole rest of the thing. The last point is you can again, customize it to your variety and your skill. Double sided boards mean that you have a 12 sector and an 18 sector puzzle in order to figure out. And again, it gives you more depth when you can argue, especially after playing the 12 several times, that maybe it's getting a little bit too easy if this is your fancy. The rules are okay, but once you play a round, it becomes very intuitive. So, what do I think? What am I going to do with this? Honestly, I really like this game. This is a very different departure from the deduction game that we are used to seeing, which is more randomness, chaos, accusations, and high luck, and necessarily slower on the strategy and pure reasoning side of things. And in that way, it is very refreshing. And that is why I think a lot of people are really excited by this and why it's very hard to find in between printings right now. At the same time, you have to recognize it for what it is. It is a puzzle wrapped in a board game shell. And if you don't want to do a brain burning puzzle, it doesn't matter how good the brain burning puzzle is or how unique the concept or how great the execution, if you do not want to spend the mental fortitude and concentration that this game requires in order to be competitive, not only on your own map, but watching what other people are doing as they place tokens on the map as well, this is not going to be for you. In fact, that is my biggest hang up about it in the first place, because this is a game where I look at it and I go, there are nights that I'm going to have absolutely no desire to play this if somebody pulls this out, right? It's not one of those games where, you know, just pull it out and play it anytime. Like I have to be in the right mindset to be able to play and focus on a game like this. And so if that appeals to you, you Euro gamers out there, this is the deduction game you have been waiting for. Your dice rolling, chaos creating players out there like myself, who enjoy math very much, you will like this game at times. But if you do not like any of the lack of some of those things, or the detail, or the concentration, and the fine point in terms of figuring out and remembering if you do not like the Sherlock Holmes puzzle clue type games this is an extension of that into the deduction realm and you will not find yourself having fun with this so what am I going to do with this game honestly I don't know yet this is a game where it's a three this is a very good game I know why this is highly rated but I'm not sure with the people I play with, and myself included, how much this is actively going to hit the table because like I mentioned, you have to be in the mindset to play a style of game like this, unlike many others where 
whatever your mood fancy is, you can still get them played to the table. Is it worthy of the hype? Absolutely. Is having an app going to turn people away? Absolutely. Is it right for you? I think you need to play and see how brain burning it is for you. This is the classical Goldilocks scenario, right? Some of you are going to find this way too mathy, concentrate hard thinking. Some of you are going to find that this is just right. And some of you are going to find that this is even lower than what you were expecting because you are at the opposite end playing heavy euros. And this comes second nature. But unlike the Goldilocks scenario, everybody's going to have, again, a different one. It's not going to be as easy as this one's not good, this one's not good, and clearly this is the right one. And so that's what you need to know about this game before you go into it. So this is one I could see staying in my collection for a very long time and being played very selectly. At the same time, I could see it easily collecting a lot of dust just because it requires the exact right scenario and mood for me to be able to play it. And I could see it leaving for that reason too to make room for other things that might hit the table more frequently. All in all though, that's what you need to know about the search for Planet X. Thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed it. See you around. Stay classy.